All right, here's homework number 11, um, proofs with complementary and supplementary angles, numbers one through eight. So just going over <clears throat> each problem so that you guys have a clear understanding. <laughs> so if you look at your T-chart, steps one and two, um, those are both given, right? Because they are both given to us in the given statement. Now, <clears throat> the reason why you guys, this is definition of complementary angles, it's because look what was given to us, right? So in the given statement, we have measurement angle one and measurement angle two are complementary angles. So that should give you guys an indication that, oh, if one and two are complementary, then that means both of those angles add up to 90 degrees. And why can we say that? Because that's literally the definition of complementary angles. Then <clears throat> when we get statement four, the reason why we can write statement four, it's because we use the second statement, and since measurement angle two is equal to 74, we can substitute that in right there, right? So if we substitute 74 in for measurement angle two, that's how we get statement number four. And what's the reason? Because we substituted using lines two and, sorry, that should not say actually four, that should actually say three. We're using t lines two and three. Okay, and then, okay, so how did we get five? How did we get statement five? Well, we looked at this and like, oh, if we subtract 74 from both sides, then we'll get measurement angle one's equal to 16, which is subtraction property. <clears throat> okay, so for number two, um, one and two, those are both given. Now, how come we can write this statement? Why are we allowed to use that statement? Because in statement one, it says one and two are supplementary and angle one and two add up to 180 degrees, <coughs> which is the definition of supplementary angles. Now, how do we get statement four? Well, we use the substitution property by substituting 145 in for measurement angle two. So it's gonna be measurement angle one plus 145 is equal to 180. And that's the substitution method, or substitution, using lines two and three. <coughs> okay, and then, all okay, right, fifth step is measuring angle one is equal to 35. How do we figure that out? Well, we had this statement before, and we subtracted both sides by 145 in order to get that. <coughs> okay, so um, this one. Now, um, it looks like a lot, you guys, but you guys just have to take it one step at a time, right? Just take it one step at a time. So, the first three are all given because they are written in the given statement. So, I'm writing given for all those. Now, in this next one, it says measuring angle two is equal to measuring angle three. Why can you say that? Well, you, when you guys look at these angles, right? It, that angle two and that angle three, those are vertical angles, and you guys know vertical angles are congruent. So, since these are vertical angles, that's why we can say vertical angles are congruent. Same thing for that line, right? Since we know those are vertical angles, we know vertical angles are congruent. So that, that gets those down. Now the next question is, okay, so <coughs> how do we get six and seven? Well, for measuring angle one is equal to measuring angle two, you guys. Look at this given statement and look at this one that we just found right here. If measurement angle one is equal to measurement angle three and measurement angle two is equal to measurement angle three, right? They're both equal to measurement angle three. So it just makes sense that measurement angle one is equal to measurement angle two. And that's when you guys, we use the transitive property and we use lines one and four. <clears throat> now, when you guys take a look at this one, right? Notice four is measurement angle four is equal to measurement angle six, and right here you have measurement angle five is equal to measurement angle six. So since four is equal to six and five is equal to six as well, <coughs> we can say four is equal to five because of the transitive property using lines two and five. And then this last one. So notice, you guys. We have, from the transitive property, we discovered, um, 
Where are we at? Oh yeah. So we got that one from the transitive property, right? Now we got this one from the transitive property, correct? So if we substituted measuring angle two right there, right? And if we substituted measuring angle five for measuring angle four right there, we would have this statement right there. Measurement angle two is equal to measurement angle five. Why are we allowed to do that? Because that is using the substitution property. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> Number four. So first two are given. Now, measurement angle one is measurement angle one. So this is a property that we've written before, and this is called the reflexive property, you guys. It's when something is equal to itself. So we say measurement angle one is equal to measurement angle one, reflexive property. Now the next line, right? So how did we get from how did we get statement four? Well, from here to here, you guys, all you did was add measurement angle two to both sides, right? You added measurement angle two to both sides to get that statement, and that's the addition property. Now, how do we get to here, right? What changed? Well, this changed and this changed, correct? Which means you probably use statement one to substitute into there, and you probably use statement two to substitute into there. So that's a substitution property, which is why I wrote substitution property one and two into four. That should say four. Substituted one and two into statement four. Now, how do we get from here to there? <coughs> well, What's 35 plus 145, you guys? 180. So all we did was combine like terms. And then how do we get from here to go to there, right? Well, if one and two is equal to 180, right? Measuring angle one plus measuring angle two is 180. Well, that's literally, so that means they have to be supplementary, right? Because you guys know supplementary angles occur when two angles add up to 180. And the reason for that definition of supplementary angles. Uh, five. Okay, so for number five, you guys, so the, both of these are given, right? So we just write given. Now for three and four, you guys, notice how we wrote Measuring angle H plus measuring angle G is 90, and measuring angle I plus measuring angle G is 90. Reason? That's simply the definition of complementary angles, right? Because in statements 1 and 2, they say those angles are complementary. So it just makes sense. We can say, oh, since they're complementary, both angles add up to 90. So definition of complementary angles. Now, how do we get to step 5, right? <coughs> well, we have measurement angle H plus measuring angle G is equal to measuring angle I plus measuring angle G. So notice they're coming from here, you guys, right? And since they're both equal to 90, we can simply substitute one of them into the other, right? In order to get that statement. So that's the substitution property using lines three and four. Okay, now how do we get from five to step six? Well, step six, you guys, notice it's just measuring angle H and I. Notice both of these have measurement angle G, right? So we can subtract measurement angle G from both of them in order to get what we need, which is subtraction property. And then you guys, this is a, um, I did not <coughs> tell you guys to write this down, but I think it's something you guys can handle. Notice six to seven, you guys, all it's doing, doing is changing from equality to congruency equality to congruency or congruency to equality. We just simply label that as definition of congruence. <coughs> when two measurements are equal and you, the next line is congruency, that's just definition of congruence. Six. Very similar to the um, five you guys, the only thing is that they say it's supplementary. So since one and two say they're supplementary, um, that means you can say that they both add up to 180. <coughs> so that's definition of supplementary angles. And we get this, you guys, again, because, right, notice they're both right there, and they're both equal to 180, right? So we could just substitute one of these in for the 180 to get that statement. 
And then notice you guys, they both have measurement angle G. So you can subtract measurement angle G from both sides in order to get that. And then again, <coughs> this is definition of congruency when you go from equality to congruency or vice versa. If you guys ever have congruency, you can always go to equality. <coughs> so that's the definition of congruency. Okay, seven. So seven says you guys, um, given measurement angle 1 and measurement angle 2 are linear pairs, and measurement angle 2 and measurement angle 3 are linear pairs, prove angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So, write our given statements, right? Now, the reason why we can say these statements, you guys, is because since we know they're a linear pair, right? In your guys' definitions, you guys know linear pairs mean that they're also supplementary, which means they add up to 180 degrees. So the reason for that, you guys, is linear pairs are supplementary. Now, notice that both of these equal to 180, right? So we can substitute one of them into the other for 180 in order to get this statement, right? <coughs> That's substitution property. And then notice they both have measurement angle 2, right? So you can subtract measurement angle 2 from both sides to get this statement for subtraction property. And then again, you guys, if you have two things that equal each other, and it goes to congruency, all that is is called the definition of congruence. <coughs> okay, and last one. Okay, this is um, something I wanted you guys to try on your own, and I'm going to erase it so that you guys just get a clear idea. But, this is what I expect you guys to do by the end of our proofs. It's we have blank ones, and you guys try to do your best to fill it in. So remember, <coughs> Step one is to fill in the given, right? So we have A is parallel to B. And you can write this too, because that's the end goal, right? <coughs> so, when you first start off, it's like, okay, since it says angle one is congruent to three, let's start with angle one first. Can we say anything with the angle one when we look at our image? Well, I notice that those are vertical angles, right? So why not take a shot and just write that. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Why? Because I noticed that vertical angles are congruent. To just see if you guys could somehow relate angle 1 to angle 3, right? So since I just said angle 1 is angle 2 to 2, hmm, I wonder if 2 and 3 somehow congruent to each other. And they are, right? Angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 because corresponding angles are congruent. <coughs> Great. And then lastly, how do we get this statement then? Well, we found these two statements, right? And that says angle 1 is congruent to 2 and angle 2 is congruent to 3. Oh, so that must mean since they're both equal or congruent to angle 2, angle 1 must be congruent to 3. Why? Transitive property from lines two and three. All right, so hopefully it helps you guys out. Again, just keep on practicing proofs, you guys, because the more you guys get exposed to it, the easier it does become. Okay, good luck, peace.